There's a new book out about the brave men and women who keep us safe. Stay tuned as we talk about Groton Mystic Emergency Services on this week's edition of Welcome to Groton. Welcome to Groton. I'm your host, Carol Pratt, and with me today is our town historian, Jim Streeter, and Mr. Bill Tischer, who is co-author of this book. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank I you. I love all. having you on and learning about local history. I'm a native, and I never know enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, what inspired you to write this book? Well, I had a 30-year career in the fire service in the city of Groton, oh, wow. retiring as a captain in 2015, and I've always had a love for the history of the fire service. And Groton has such a unique situation with their fire departments, it just begged to have a book written about it. Right. Now so what, so he, he comes yeah. to me and he says, based on previous books, yeah. he says, Jim, why don't we do a book on the Groton City Fire Department? And uh -huh. I said, well, why don't we do one better? Why don't we do it on all of Groton's emergency services? Uh, so no. based on that and, and the fact that my involvement with the police, having been a police officer, right. having been involved with the fire departments and, and budgetary things while right. in government, uh, I said, yeah, that sounds right. like a great idea. So yeah. right there, there we, we went. So the emergency services you cover in this book are fire, Police, what else? And the ambulance service. And ambulance. And we also cover um, the, the Lawrence and Memorial paramedic service because they oh, also yes. provide a service to the town. Yes, they do. And then there's a little unknown one that a lot of people aren't aware of, but uh -huh. they're, they're very important, is the dispatch center. Oh, of course, yes. And that is so important. That's where the 911 calls go, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. Now, how unique is Groton? Because we are unique and we have a city, we have a town, we have boroughs, we have... How unique are the... Well, uh, <laughs> as we're well aware, the Groton uh, was established way, way back in little villages. So we have uh, seven fire districts. Seven. And uh, each one except one has a, uh, a fire department, at least one fire department. Mm -hmm. There's two districts. The city and Mystic have two fire departments. Now, is that but, unusual? I mean, do all New England towns have that many? Uh, there are some towns, but we are very unusual in the state of Connecticut as yeah. far as the, the fire districts are concerned, the number of fire districts yeah. that we have. Uh, we also have uh, uh, three, three Grottons. We have right. the town of Groton, the city of Groton, and Groton Lawn Point. Mm -hmm. Although th there's, there's 23 departments that are covered in this book. Wow. Uh, and although it, it seems convoluted, mm -hmm. it works. It's yeah. worked for years. Uh, so uh, we, we, we looked at the, the departments and then we looked at, we had volunteers and now most of it is uh, uh, paid departments now. And all, I think people should know too, all of these um, departments work together and they're like help with assistance if, if something goes wrong, correct? I mean, they're always ready to jump in and, and help each other, so that's, a, am sure, a very good thing. We work together so often, it's, it's very easy for them. They, they all know what they're doing. Wow. And how many fire departments, Bill, are there? Uh, there's nine municipal departments or, or companies uh -huh. and uh, two industrial one federal and one state. Okay, what are the industrial ones? Electric boat and Pfizer's. Oh, okay. And the uh, federal government, you have the submarine base. Oh, of course. And yeah. then um, for the state, you have the Groton New London Airport. Okay. Now, if there was a fire in Groton that was huge, which I hope never happens, would the sub base and them, they would come and assist too? Or Absolutely. just our They would. Oh, yes. so everyone's tied in together. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. That is great. But at one time, we also had two other fire departments. Oh. Okay. Uh, we had the Coast Guard training station. They had their own fire department. Oh, over by Avery yeah. Point. And then, uh, yeah, and then Hess Oil Company had fire fighting equipment because of the, the oil spills and things like that. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, what is the oldest one of all these fire departments? The oldest fire department in the town is Old Mystic. Old Mystic, and it's located. I'm trying to picture it. They're out Route 27. Yeah. 
and uh, off of 184. They cover that area. Okay. And uh, they started in 1837. Is that right? Yes. Now, and the others, there was no other in that area? Did they cover all of Mystic then? They was covered that? Mystic as well, yeah. Wow. And early on. Yeah. And then into the later 1800s, there were other departments that formed and, mm -hmm. and fell off the, by the wayside. They just couldn't k keep sustained until the Hoxie started in 1875. Oh, yes, yes. Now, B.F. Hoxie, is that named after a captain or someone? Is that? He was a resident of the town that was, I think he donated money towards the purchase of their first steamer. Oh. So they named the company after him. Yeah, I always wondered about that. Um, in this book, do you talk about, I remember as a child, there was a big fire. Um, there used to be a, a movie house called the Strand Theater, and that was, you know, everybody was talking about it. But do you cover these large fires that, that have happened in the past in the book? Yes, we do. Yeah. We have uh, a number of the larger fires in, that happened in Mystic, okay. also in the town of Groton and the city. Okay, and what, which ones in particular do you cover? Is that, there was a large one I remember where Kerr's and Clare's used to be, which would be across the street from, and it was just before the bridge, I remember, on the left-hand side. Is that one of the bigger ones that they Yes, that, that's covered in the book. Yeah. Uh, if I remember, it's the same building that we're thinking of. Uh, they had an assistance from New London come to help them put that really? fire out. Wow. Wow, yeah, that was huge. Oh, yeah. What other, what large fire happened in the city? Uh, uh, Ken's Tackle. Ah. We have that in the book. Wow. And uh, the first large fire that was right about the year that Hoxie formed mm -hmm. was the Oceanic Woolen Mills fire, which at the time was an enormous fire. and It took down uh, numerous buildings in downtown Mystic. Now, where was that located? Uh, that I've never heard of. Where the park is now. Across oh, where the park is now, so near Cottrell Street? Exactly. Oh, I'll be done. There was a woolen mill there. Mm. I never knew that. Wow. And that burned to the ground? Yes. Oh, my, my. There's a photo of what's left of it in the, in the book. Wow. Now, um, that's fire departments. How about police departments? Did we start out with, uh, how many do we have in town? Well, we actually have three. We had four at one time. Okay. Uh, we have the town of Groton Police Department. Right. We have the uh, city of Groton Police Department. Right. Groton Long Point Police Department, and at one time we had a contingency. In fact, we had a troop of the uh, Connecticut State Police here. Ah. But originally what we started with, uh, we started with constables. There was no real organized police department. They had uh, people that they would hire as constables when needed. Mm -hmm. uh, they worked out of their houses. And they were like a sheriff, you mean? Yeah, well, sort of, <laughs> sort of like a sheriff. But that goes back, we're talking uh, in the mid to, to late uh, 1800s when we wow. used those constables. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And they were in Groton or in? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. they were in Groton and Mystic, I'll sure. Be done. Uh, when did the town uh, police department form in the, uh, in the city and then, do you know? <laughs> well, you, you have to go back now. We had the Groton Bank, which is the, the city, which right. was formerly called the borough. Right. Uh, that was the hub of, uh, of the town, as well as Mystic. Okay. Uh, so the town, even though right now they're the largest uh, department, uh, they had the government because the city or borough didn't have a government at that time. Right. So they would provide police protection as warranted. Uh, so the town, even though they provided, they, they did not actually start until the, I believe it was 1927 or uh, really? uh, around that period of time. So who was protecting the borough then? then? Uh, the <laughs> town of Groton's government would okay. provide police protection upon request oh. from the borough or, oh. or the Groton Bank at the time. Okay. So actually the city uh, organized as a borough by mm -hmm. legislations in 1903 right. and that's when the first police department actually started in, in Groton. In the, in the city? In mean? the city. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, they came to the town. They had a formally organized through legislation, right. state legislation, and then came along Groton Long Point and that was in 1939, Groton Long Point uh, established their police department. And they figured they, they needed, because they were way off to the, you know, away from everyone else, they needed a police department? Well, th they wanted to have their own police protection okay. available uh, immediately, mm -hmm. uh, because if, if you took like the, the town, if the town had a, 
a patrolman in Bequanic and they needed somebody at Groton Long Point, they'd have to wait a while. Yeah. So they wanted yeah. their own protection. Right. Um, how, how big was the police department? Um, you know, was there, I don't know how many are in the, in the police department now, maybe a hundred or so, but was it a very well, totally, small? Well, probably totally there are, uh, probably uh, close to a hundred. Yeah. And that includes all three police departments. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, but when they initially started, uh, they, they had three patrolmen. That, is that uh, right? Three patrolmen. Well, of course, we were much smaller then, too, I'm we sure. We were, uh, population-wise. Yeah. Uh, with, with the businesses, the influx of, of our industrial and submarine right. base created a, oh, a, yeah. a heavier need to have police yeah. protection. This is yeah. great. we got to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll continue talking about this new book on Groton Emergency Services. Please stay tuned. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A covenant that split the skies over Berlin. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A promise was made. A solemn oath that liberated Seoul. A sacred trust that defended Khe Sanh. A pact that dug in in Da Nang. A contract that weathered Tet. A promise was made. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. A bond that patrolled door to door in Fallujah. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. A promise we all must keep. DAV fights for all veterans and their families so they get the health care, financial benefits, and support they earned. If you're a veteran who needs help or you'd like to help us keep the promise, visit DAV.org. Welcome back. We're talking with Jim Streeter and Bill Tischer about their new book, Groton Emergency Services. Um, the state police used to be here, you mentioned it, um, and it was over in um, Bridge Street, right? In that building that there? Was Is their, that where they first that was were? Their, no, that's no? their second home. The first home, uh, it was a home, it was a house, a converted house uh, down by Pfizer. Really? Uh, they went in there, I, I believe it was in uh, uh, 1923. And they stayed there until 1930, uh, 31, I believe uh -huh. it was. And they, that's when they moved down to the brick building that's down by the submarine memorial. Yeah, and you can see the bridge from there. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah. Yes, you and can. And they're no longer there. No, they moved out. They stayed 50 years. They moved out in 1973. They outgrew the facilities uh -huh. down there. And, of course, uh, with the new highways being built, uh, they, had to, they had to have facilities that could respond to all the major highways right. in the area. So they Plus, moved up to Montville. we have such efficient services here, we didn't need them. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> um, where were the police departments first located? Did we? I don't think we covered that. Because right now, town of Groton, of course, is on the top of Fort Hill. Your city of Groton is in the municipal building. But where were they originally? Well, when they first started, as we talked earlier, uh, they worked out of their houses. Yes, right, as constables. Uh, and then yeah. they had call boxes. Uh, so they could walk around and pick up the phone and see if there was an emergency someplace that they had to respond to. So you could call a call box if you oh, had? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then uh, the borough actually had the first police department right. physical building. Right. And it was on School Street. Uh, it was the meeting house. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, for, the, for the borough at the time. Uh -huh. 
Uh, they had a lock up there. And uh, they stayed there for a while, and then they moved down to the utility building that was down on Thames Street, big utility building. Yeah. Um, and then they moved up to the present location, the yeah. municipal building in the city. Right. Uh, the town actually didn't move into the town hall until the mid-30s. And they moved into the basement. I remember that. And I do too. <laughs> when I was on the police department, that we, we coordinated yeah, with them. That was crowded, so, but there was a little yeah, jail down there. there I remember that. Yeah. And then, of course, I, I believe it was in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, they moved up to the yeah. new facilities on the top of Fort Hill. Yes. Groton Law Point, uh, from what I can determine, they were in a stone house that was down at the, at the point. Oh. And then they moved into the casino building. Yeah. And then they That's moved. That's kind of their recreational building. Yes, right? it is. Yeah. And it's not they, a casino in case no, anybody, it's not, no, no, it's, <laughs> they call it that and people yeah. say, oh, we have a casino, no, we don't, not there. <laughs> and then they move uh, to the upstairs portion of where the, uh, the firehouse is located. Ah. So that's where they were and that's oh, where they are. Um, ambulance services. Um, how many ambulance companies do we have? I mean, there's, I know there's one on Sandy Hollow Road, there's one over by Grasso Gardens. Is that the only two or is there more? Currently, those are the only two. Okay. And there was an earlier uh, incantation of the Mystic River Ambulance was the BF Hoxie Fire Department started with an ambulance. Oh, okay. But the first ambulance that was brought into the, the town was a donation by Mrs. Mary Harkness. Oh. She, she donated an ambulance to the state police. Oh. And that ambulance covered the entire town and actually responded to calls as far as the Rhode Island line. Wow. Yeah. So we have the one by Grasso Gardens is the Groton Ambulance? That's Groton okay. Ambulance, correct. And the one on Sandy Hollow Road is? Is the Mystic. Mystic River Ambulance, yeah. And again, do they work like police and fire? Everybody works together yes. and, and helps out when a call comes in and what have you? Yeah. Yes. And so those are the only two, and that seems to work. Works is, very well. Yeah. Now L and M must have something too, right? Do they work in? L and M has a regional paramedic response unit. Okay. Then they have one station on this side of the bridge and one station on the other side of the bridge in New London, and they cover both regions. And sometimes they have a third unit that floats between either side where needed. Okay. And they just come and respond strictly to provide advanced life support when it's needed. Okay. Now, those ambulance services began with that donation you said in Mystic. Is that when they started, when she gave the money? She gave the ambulance to the state police, and they responded with it until two years later, I believe it was 1945, mm -hmm. that Mystic Hoxie started with their first ambulance. Okay. And two years later, they bought a brand new ambulance, and they sold the old one to the uh, contingent that started Groton Ambulance, oh. and that was Groton Ambulance's first vehicle. So Groton Ambulance didn't start till the mid-40s? 47. Oh, wow. Now, were they always located? They couldn't have been, because that's new uh, building, isn't it? Where were they located, the Groton Ambulance, do you know? Groton Ambulance's original building was a hangar down at the airport. Really? Yes. Oh, and then down. they moved to facilities just outside of that on Tower Avenue. Tower. Oh, that's over by where, kind of near where the skating rink is. Just, on that just road? off the airport, just off from the airport. Oh. Down okay. by Thomas Road. Down by Thomas, oh, down by yeah. Thomas Road, okay. Yeah, it's okay. All, it was almost on the corner of Thomas. Oh, where uh, Hertz is. There's a, if yeah. You see, yeah, <laughs> right after that, right? you'll yeah. see there's a little garage mm -hmm. with like three bays, and that was. Their oh. original facility. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, I've, I've more, more their original by. modern facility. Yeah, I've driven by there wondering, and gee. Another <laughs> interesting point, and a lot of people aren't aware of this, but at one time, for a short period of time, for about two years, mm -hmm. uh, the city fire department had moved from a, a building on Pleasant Street. And okay. after they moved, the Groton Ambulance moved into there for, for about two years before they moved oh. to their, their present facilities. Oh, I'll be darned. Wow. I think they actually had that as a second facility Yeah. because they had uh, people that lived in the city that could get to that quicker and get the uh -huh. ambulance out from there versus Tower Avenue. And I bet it was all volunteers in those days, wasn't it? it? Was. Yes. Yeah, isn't it amazing? We have such good people. I like, especially this time of year, I like to think positive. <laughs> <laughs> um, photos. I know there's photos in this book. Were they hard to find? Did people keep uh, uh, archives in the departments or did you have to go search people's attics? Or? Well, 
It was a very interesting process to go through <laughs> because we had a, a deadline we had to meet. Mm. But I, we can give, tell you some horror stories. Uh, uh, when I was on the police department, we developed our own pictures. And I used to look at all the old photographs and negatives uh -huh. from the early 30s and 40s. Wow. And we, we wanted to get some of those. However, uh, when we approached the uh, police department, they had thrown all of them away. Oh, no. Uh, and then we had another situation where they, they, had, they had numerous photographs, but they had stored them outside in a metal temporary container mm. building or whatever, and they got wet. Mm. So we lost those. Uh, this is a good lesson for people out there. If you have photos and aren't sure, call Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But we did find uh, a lot of the departments had them, but they were stored in boxes and in, uh, you know, in closets and things. They're not cataloged and or anything, probably. Yeah. Right. None of them were. <laughs> we, oh, wow. We, there are great individual collections. We, yes. A lot of the photographs we obtained were from families of, of firemen and policemen. Wow. Uh, but you sort through all that. Oh, yes. And, mm -hmm. and try and figure out the dates. Of the, I know people are famous for not writing on the backs of photos or whatever. My mother was really good that way, but a lot of people don't. When you take the picture or, or you have a copy of a picture, because it's such a different era now with digital, but if you have old photos, try and write down who they are. Yes. Well, throughout the book, you're going to see in the captions where we use circa, you see a little C for approximately, because like you say, yeah. a lot of people didn't write the information on the back. Yeah. And Sometimes you, know. you can just go by the clothing too, right? right? <laughs> and then another <laughs> unfortunate thing is one of the departments was very resistant to uh, provide us any photographs, oh. uh, feeling that uh, because the book is going to make some monies, which we'll talk about later, yes, yeah. um, uh, they didn't want. It, they didn't think it was appropriate to provide. Well, let's rest. let's cover that now, just in case, because yeah. I know we only have like four minutes left. So, where where is the money from the book? You you know you're selling the book, obviously, and where is the money going to go? We have two different uh, services that we're going to help out with this. Jim and I personally are donating a lump sum to the Bridgeport Burn Center to help them out with. Uh, with their center. Is that where most people, including people in our area, go when yes. they have it's severe burns? It's the major Connecticut facility, yep. yes. Wow. Oh, that's and cool. then the royalties of the book, uh, uh -huh. and of course I've seen it and Bill has, has, has seen it numerous times, <laughs> is the Salvation Army provides a canteen truck at major emergency uh, fires or yes, things like this yeah. to provide the emergency personnel with some refreshments while they're actively in involved in the fire thing. Wow. So we took the royalties of the book and donated it to the Salvation Army, earmarked to that canteen truck. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, bless you both. What's your favorite picture in this book? I can't say I have one specific no. picture, but what was very important to me to make sure it was included in the book was we cover all of the line of duty fatalities that occurred throughout the history that we oh, could find. That you could find yeah. We recognized each person with a photograph and a small description. Oh, that's Excuse me. wonderful. And I thought that was very important to, yes. to have in the book. And, wow. and to tag on that, uh, through our research, if we hadn't taken on this task, we wouldn't have learned of three individuals that had died in the line of duty that even their departments weren't aware of. Really? Uh, so again, it's very important. They gave their lives in the line yes. of duty, and it's very important that we recognize them. And that's, uh, like Bill, I think yeah. those are the most important pictures yeah. that, that I feel are in the book. And what a wonderful thing you're doing with those uh, donation to the Bridge of Port yeah. Burn Center. Um, what's the oldest picture in the book? <laughs> I thought it was in Mystic in uh, 1890 or 1893, but Bill corrected me on that. <laughs> I believe the oldest picture in the book is, I think it's the Oceanic Woolen Mills fire in downtown Mystic. The, Cot the Cottrell on Street Cottrell one, Street, yeah. where you said the park is now. I'll be done. And, and what, year? what year? That was 1875, I believe. Wow, wow. <laughs> now, both of you served. Um, in various capacities, like you said, you were a fireman, captain, and you were in the police force and everything else. I mean, you're the Renaissance man. <laughs> Are you, do you have cameos in the book anywhere? We sure do. Oh, good. <laughs> I have one cameo that uh, was a picture of myself very early in my career uh -huh. in 1985. Uh. And I, it was with a friend of mine, and I, I like to have the picture in there more to recognize him because he also passed away 
from cancer a few years ago. But uh, yeah, they were in there very, oh, very good. young. That's good. Well, where can we get this book? Help support your efforts. Well, uh, it'll be available at the mm -hmm. Groton Public Library. Okay. Uh, we'll have it uh, at uh, Buford's Restaurant on McCormick Road. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have it at uh, Ken's Tackle Shop. Okay. And I'm That's sure there's going to be other locations as, as we get right. Uh, right. get out there and, and uh, people start seeing it that right. we're going to be asked for. And I'm no, sure the bookstores yeah, will have it. Yeah, and I, yeah, Bank Square and yes. Mystic and stuff. And I know, mm -hmm. knowing the library, if people ask, where can I get this book? If they're out of them, they'll say, oh, go here, go there. So they're and then very if they want way. to, they can contact Bill or myself yes. also, and, okay. and we'll have them Great. available. And, too. Uh, I, I appreciate so much you being on the program, and this was this was very very interesting and very heartwarming. Thank you so much. Before we wrap up our program, let's look at the upcoming town meetings for the next two weeks. If you'd like a copy of this wonderful, interesting book and support the Bridgeport Burn Center and the Salvation Army, you can purchase a copy at Bank Square Books, Buford's Restaurant, Ken's Tackle Shop, and the Groton Public Library. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll join us for the next edition of Welcome to Groton.